The following is a special presentation of Conifer Radio, our continuing series of Conifer Podcast. Conifer Podcast presents the true life stories of our U.S. Highway 285 corridor and Evergreen residents, their remarkable contributions to our community, and their encouragement to us all. We continue this week with Miss Kathy Kowalski, a faithfully canine, in a Conifer Podcast recording from April 14th of 2021. Conifer Radio offers its support and gratitude to Kathy's efforts to educate our mountain communities on behalf of our special needs individuals and the incredible value of a well-trained service animal. Conifer Radio listeners, we are here live in mobile studio with Ms. Kathy Kowalski, a faithfully canine service dog and dog training. Kathy's been training dogs for many years now, most recently training service dogs for Freedom Service Dogs of America for almost six years. She's trained dogs of different breeds and temperaments for individuals with disabilities and mobility issues, and also PTSD for veterans and civilians. Her local Faithfully Canine Program's mission statement is to empower individuals with disabilities to train a dog as their service dog, transforming both of their lives. Kathy, we welcome you to Conifer Podcast. Thank you. Well, why don't we lead off here by having you tell our local communities a little about you, your story, and what it was that prompted you to create Faithfully Canine Service Dog and Dog Training. Well, I've always believed that we are here to help others. That's, that's, why, we were, that's why we're humans. Um, I worked at the Family Crisis Center working with abused children. I was a police dispatcher. I worked at the elementary school with the Sting program that I created to help get kids off of drugs and alcohol. And then I became a service dog trainer. It's all jobs of service. But when I was working at, Faith, at Freedom Service Dogs, there was a void, being able to train the dog that you already have instead of going on a wait list for two years and then getting an additional dog that, you know, maybe didn't really fit into your family of having lots of dogs. I've seen service dog change lives, save lives, and bring hope where there was no hope. It's our vision and mission to reach as many individuals with PTSD or mobility issues as possible and assist them in training their dogs to become a service dog. One of our clients that I worked with was told that her dog could never be a service dog because it was just too nervous. And we worked with that dog and they moved to England and she passed out in a mall and her dog went and got help for her. So I've seen these dogs make such a difference in people's lives, enabling them to be able to go places that they haven't been able to go to in years. So just basically, we just want to help people. It's almost as much training the people as it is training the dog, is it not? Absolutely, because we want that bond to be strong between the client and their dog, not their dog and me. We'll talk a little bit about what it is about Faithfully Canine and its presence in the region, our mountain communities, that's been so important to Conifer Evergreen and our surrounding areas. Well, we work with individuals with disabilities of PTSD and mobility, but we drive to their home. We don't have a storefront. We come to you. And we do outings in the neighborhoods in which you live because we've found that it's really important to be comfortable to be able to do this, to be able to train your dog and to not be nervous. And so by doing it in your home, you're not having that additional stress of being somewhere you're unfamiliar and being around a lot of unfamiliar people like in a group setting. And then doing the outings in the area enable you to get used to taking your dog places that you're actually going to take them instead of places that you're never going to go. So that's just a real plus to be able to work with people in their home and around the area in which they live. Will you differentiate yourself from the Freedom Service Dogs organization in a very special way? And you've talked about training the person's own dog being so important to your mission, vision, and service. Tell us a little bit more about what this means why this differentiates you from other types of service dog trainers and why it's important also to our mountain communities up here. Well, we work with civilians and veterans. Uh, We don't charge veterans or first responders for our services because we believe they've already given so much. We rely on donors and sponsors and um, things like that to offset those costs. Our civilians pay $50 a session, which is one third of what it costs because we spend an hour with them, but we can have a lot of drive time and book work time and other time that has to be charged to those. So again, we rely on donors and sponsors. Uh, Without those donors and sponsors, we wouldn't be able to offer our services. We are currently working with 30 clients with 15 clients waiting for medical recommendations. So it's important for us to work directly with our clients in their home. It's been a tough year for donations, as everybody knows. And so um, we're just trying to make it through and and we're going to be there for people no matter what. And also in terms of training the individual's 
own pet, their own dog, this also differentiates you from the freedom service dog and other types of service animal trainers. You basically already have an individual that has his or her own, her own dog. Is that not largely what you've focused upon? That's mostly what we do. We also try to help people if they don't already have a dog to find a dog. But the difference is, is that it might take seven to 12 months to do this training. But it, during that time, you're bonding with that dog. That dog is learning your routines. The dog doesn't have to live in a kennel situation where it's uncomfortable all the time and never knows what's going to happen. The dog really settles in and he's comfortable. The client is comfortable. So it's just a better for us, a better fit rather than training a dog and then spending two weeks with that person, telling them what the dog can do and then letting them go. So this way... We're constantly working with them. They work with their dog a minimum of 30 minutes a day in between sessions on what we've taught them. And it's just a really good fit for having that dog with you all the time. A lot of times, especially with PTSD, the, just having the dog around makes a huge difference. Sometimes uh, people don't have nightmares anymore. Um, the dog can pick up on things that it wouldn't have maybe learned if it wasn't there with that client all the time. And I can't stress enough how important it is for a dog to have a home and not live in a kennel situation where there might be 30 or 40 dogs that at any one time they might not be familiar with thrown out there uh, alone at night in a kennel, you know, by itself. Um, I just think it's a better, better thing for both the clients and the dogs. And I think you've proven that with the fact that you've got a waiting list now. If we can talk a little bit about something fun that you've discovered up here about the Conifer Evergreen Bailey US 285 Corridor community, talk about perhaps us being dog people up here. This is important to all of us as dog and cat owners and pet owners. What's fun and interesting about living and working up here? The amount of hiking trails up here is unbelievable from Conifer, Bailey to Evergreen. And the surrounding areas, there's such a wide variety of trails. You can have easy trails, you can have moderate, challenging. Some have waterfalls, uh, lakes, streams, trails where there's many people, trails where you wanna spend time alone. It's all up here. It's just unbelievable how much opportunity there is to get out and do things with your dog. I bet you when you're exploring these, these trails and these hiking areas that you discover just how important to our communities the love and the companionship of a dog is, especially when you see them all on the trails. That's true. It's really, it's just so enjoyable to see your dog happy walking with you on the trails, exploring, seeing new things, meeting new people. It's great. How long have you been up here, Kathy? I've been up here 40 years. Folks, you're talking to a veteran here of our mountain communities, and we are live in mobile studio with Ms. Kathy Kowalski, a faithfully canine service dog and dog training. And you can reach her at 720-934-7378 or visit her website at www.faithfullycanine, that's K with the letter K, canine.org, www.faithfullycanine.org. So Kathy, what's, what have you discovered that's important to the nonprofits that are up here and also then the businesses that are supporting those nonprofits? How does this all work together? So our community is always there to help others in need, from the Conifer Community Church that provides wood for people in need, to people who show up when someone needs a little extra help with snow removal, or a ride to a doctor's appointment, or Conifer Newcomers that has, uh, that usually, when we don't have COVID, has a big event, and then they make donations to nonprofits up in the area. Everybody is always willing to pitch in for somebody that needs a hand. We've had big snowstorms where... People have shown up and just to help you dig out. It's just great to see the amount of people that uh, want to help others up here. How is it that you envision the future of our mountain communities? What's the future going to look like up here in about 20 years time? Well, in the 40 years that I've been here, there's certainly been a lot of changes. You couldn't buy gas after six o'clock when I first moved here. So you had to have a lot of planning if you were going to go somewhere the next day. We didn't have a grocery store even. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, my hope that we can keep the small town atmosphere and that people continue to be there for their neighbors, that we just have that kind of community and that it never changes. And I hope that we don't overbuild it and, you know, just keep that small town feel. Very much agreed here. That's why we developed a community radio station as opposed to any other type of uh, media outlet. And we appreciate your, your being on today. And we want the listeners to know a little bit about you as Kathy, your 40 years of having been up here. What is What interesting fact is there about you 
that you would like our mountain communities to know about? Well, I don't only train service dogs. I also play the guitar and sing at local open mics. And sometimes you'll see me at local venues. I'm also a line dance teacher and I love country dancing. Where do you line dance around here? Well, uh, you don't, but we used to. <laughs> we used to dance at Desperados, but that's been gone for quite a while. Got to go down the hill for that, I suppose. Yeah, at this point, maybe someday. Sometimes at the snowpack, when they have a band, you could get out there and, and bit, dance a little bit. There you go. We will rely on you as our local area expert about line dancing for the future. So as we close our discussion today, what encouragements do you have for all of us up here in the mountain communities for the future of Conifer, Evergreen, Bailey, at the entire U.S. Highway 285 corridor? I encourage everyone to get to know their neighbors, volunteer at local establishments, be an active part of the community and make a difference because even one person just helping one person makes a difference. Well, Kathy, you're a keeper. You're also one of our long, longer term community resources. And on behalf of Conifer Radio and all of our mountain communities, we want to recognize you and your faithfully canine service dog and dog training organization for your hard work on behalf of our veterans and your continuing service to our local area mountain communities. And as we wish you all the best with Faithfully Canine, once again, how can our listeners best get in touch with you? You can call us at 720-934-7378. You can email me at faithfully, letter K, number nine, at yahoo.com. Facebook is Faithfully K9, and our website is faithfullyk9.org. And if you want to make donations, you can go to our website and do it there. Or you can do it at, on Venmo at Faithfully K9. Folks, you've heard it live and direct here. We've had Kathy Kowalski join us today. And thank you very much for all the work that you do, Kathy. Thank you. It's been great to be a part of your radio.